Today we're going to build a planar map room. This was inspired by a room early on in Lavox Sphere, which is a dungeon from the video game Baldur's Gate 2. So let's get to it. We start out with our trusty dusty chipboard. This is a 12 inch square of graphics medium chipboard. See the link in the description below. We're going to draw an octagon. First draw a 9 inch circle with a compass. So you set your compass to 4.5 inches. Also while you're at it, draw another circle with the same center, this one with a 2 inch radius. Now draw a line through the center, and with a protractor, mark out every 45 degrees and connect them to divide the circle into eighths. Connect two points along the circle where the lines hit, like you see here. Cut out the middle circle, and then cut out the octagon. This is cross-stitching mesh, sometimes referred to as granny grating, available at any crafting store. Cut some 1 inch wide strips, and then chop 8 segments, angled, so that a nice walkway goes around the room, like this. Just dry fit them from now to make sure that they're good to go, and then set them aside for later. Now onto foam board. This is ready board, which comes from Dollar Tree, and it's awesome because the paper peels off very easily. If you don't have access, any foam board will do, but to get the paper off, try some rubbing alcohol to loosen the glue before you peel. Anyway, you cut out the same shape as before, but with one difference. Cut the sides a few millimeters inward, like this. Whatever the thickness of the foam board is, that's how much you want to short it by. The idea is we need room for the walls later. Now we need to texturize the foam, and I want to do like a cobblestone thing, it's going to take 8 billion years. There's got to be a better way. To the guild! Oh, hey Bill, what's up? Just prepping and cutting, man. How about you? Probably something super Canadian. Um, uh, no, just doing normal, normal things. Anyways, you said you needed some help? Yeah, so I'm at that stage that I hate where I have to texturize foam with brick and cobblestone and stuff like that. Okay, so what you want to do is grab a ballpoint pen and some foam and spend like 37 hours drawing... I already did that bit. What else you got? I'm kidding. There's actually a really fast, easy way you can get pretty good looking cobblestone on XPS foam. It's really simple. There is this company called Green Stuff World and they make all sorts of tools and supplies for miniature painting, building, and foam craft. One of my favorite tools by them are these rolling pins. Essentially, they're just acrylic rolling pins with an embossed texture on it. And these are designed to use on green stuff to sculpt really nice detailed miniature bases. However, they happen to work really well on XPS foam. Bit of pressure, just roll it across the surface and bam kablamo you have a really fast texture that being said if you're going to order them i suggest you pick up these little silicone ring guides these i believe they design as a depth gauge for clay and green stuff so when you roll it out it makes the whatever sculpting material the thickness that you want if you put these on the rolling pin they actually act as a great edge to run along your XPS foam, keeping your pattern straight. Not really relevant with cobblestones, but when you're getting into brick patterns and stuff, it's super duper handy. Hopefully that helps and you can get back to doing whatever it is you weirdos in America land do. Thanks. If you're not familiar with Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft on YouTube, I highly suggest you go check it out and subscribe. He set up this promotional code for all of us and I took advantage of it. Details for that are in the video description below. I bought this six pack, and this was the very first project that I tried to use them on. Miraculous. Awesome. Attach them together. Glue stick should be fine since we aren't in a hurry here. Now measure one side of the foam to figure out how long your walls need to be. In my case, it was three and three eighths of an inch. Cut out eight foam segments for the walls. We just determined the length. For the height, I recommend two inches. Okay, base coat. Gonna use sort of a tanned yellow. This is Army Painter Desert Yellow. 
Just mix a bit of flow improver and some water, mix it up and ah, the joys of an airbrush. Instant butter smooth base coat. We're going to set those aside to dry for now. Now back to chipboard, cut a 5 inch by 6.5 inch rectangle. Measure out the center of the rectangle and draw a 4 inch circle there, same as the main piece from earlier. This circle will be right below that one. Now take some double corrugated cardboard and cut 3 8 inch wide strips to attach to the long ends, like this. Then another chunk for the short end. Leave the other short end open. Notice how the circle can still be seen with a little bit of extra margin on three sides. Now this is what you'll see if no image is loaded, so we're going to paint a simple star field like if you're in between planes. Give a solid coat of black. Then paint stars. Here's a common way to do that. White paint and a toothbrush. Wet the toothbrush and load up the paint. Do a test first. Press back the bristles with your thumb and slowly pull your thumb backwards so that the bristles flick. Looks like this is too watered down, so I scrub the toothbrush on a towel, get a bit more fresh paint, work that into the bristles, and test again. Much better. Okay, deep breath, and here we go. Awesome, instant star field. I thought about using my airbrush again to add some blue and purple splotches like nebulas, but I got lazy and I didn't do it. I did do it on my Necron Imotech, so here's what it looks like if you choose to do it. Okay, our sandstone pieces are dry now, so we're going to take some burnt umber and water it way down, lots of water, to make a wash. And apply it. And of course that rolling pin texture doing all kinds of favors for us. So those will take a while to dry. And after they do, apply a light dry brush with a light brown color. While we've got the brush out, let's go ahead and knock out that gunmetal or other metallic gray on the grating. This is clear plastic sheeting. It came from a box, like a toy with a window in the front so you can see inside. I'm going to cut a square of it, four and a quarter inch. You'll note that that's the exact size of the cardboard tray that we made earlier. Hot glue it to the underside of the main tile. And then hot glue the tray on. You'll be able to feel when the tray is in the right spot if you try to slide it around but it doesn't move because it's caught on the plastic sheet. Now attach the walkway pieces. Thin beads of hot glue should do fine. Then onto the walls. Hot glue them to the rabbits on all eight edges. Notice on one edge I left a gap in the wall. That's two and a half inches wide so that it mates up nicely with all my other tile sets. From cereal box or something thin like that, cut some two inch long strips. Doesn't matter how wide, I think these were like three quarter inch. You'll need eight of them. Bend them in half lengthwise and then hot glue them to the outsides of the walls where they meet. Paint the outside however you want, but I felt that since it's negative space, I would just do it in black. Also going to take my airbrush, drop some black in, and dust all the corners to give some shadow and depth to the room. If you haven't taken the plunge on an airbrush, highly recommend it. Very addictive, easy to get great results. My recommendations in the description below. Now we need to cut eight posts for the insides of the corners. I use double corrugated cardboard, cut quarter inch wide strips, and chop those down to the desired height. Apply corrugation cladding with hot glue. That's just thin cardstock or paper. And then hot glue those in place. Kebab skewers. Measure the distance between the posts that you just installed. It's going to vary depending on your accuracy so far, so just measure and figure out exactly what you need. Something a little over three inches, I think. 
Chop seven lengths of kebab skewer and then wrap a strip of paper towel around it. Coat the paper towel with white PVA glue first, slightly watered down to help it flow, and give that a few hours to dry. Set them on something slick or wax paper so that they don't end up glued down. Should be very crispy when done. Paint up with a parchment type color. This is folk art linen. And then paint on some symbols representing the planes in your campaign's multiverse. If you're an artist, unlike me, you literally have a blank canvas here to get creative. And then two dabs of hot glue, one on each adjacent post, and install the banner. From there, paint the banner poles and the corner posts, whatever you like, I just chose a rich metallic gold. To make the inserts for the tray at the bottom, which we'll call a cartridge, just cut a chipboard rectangle at 5.5 inches by 4 and an eighth of an inch. And then draw, paint, or print up an image for one end of the rectangle. Note that the last 4 inches or so are what's going to appear under the sight glass in the floor. And flip over the cartridge, 2 in 1, save on material. Alright, so here's our party. They're in a hallway, going down the hallway, and they come to a dead end where there's a metal door. Might remember that clip-on feature. And then we pop in the, uh, the room. Easy as that. So I only have one hand here because I'm doing the camera, so I apologize, but um, we'll move the party in. And I believe in the video game they were infiltrating like an enemy lair kind of thing. The sphere itself is an enormous plane-hopping device. But uh, here's an insert going in. And... Uh, yeah, so it's it's pretty good looking. You can imagine this is a good place for a big encounter as well. You know, in a room of this power, with what it's capable of, who knows what could go wrong and what could manifest. Beholder, uh, Spirit Naga, so a lot of possibilities. Part of a high level party's lair, or uh, you know, part of the enemy's lair. They could end up someplace they really don't want to be, and this would be a good way to reveal where they are in dramatic fashion. For all you 3D printers out there, don't forget to check out Heroes Horde, where you can get true tiles models, as well as a ton of other excellent fantasy-related scenery. I am Wylock, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time.